Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Natasha Denona Cranberry 5 Pan Eyeshadow Palette. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this product, then just keep watching. Alright, so let's get into the major facts about this guy. This eyeshadow palette contains five single pan eyeshadows. It is $48. It is limited edition as it is a part of Natasha Denona's holiday collection. It features four brand new eyeshadows. And starting on October 5th, it is available in select Sephora stores. However, I don't know how many that is and how select it is. But if it is on display, it should be available on an end cap. Or on October 25th is when it will be available online at Sephora and beautylish.com. Now if you aren't sure if your Sephora has this guy, call them. It never hurts to ask. The Sephora I go to actually didn't have this available in the store, but I did call and they did have it in the back and they said they would sell it to me if I went up and asked for it. So that's exactly what I did. That's how I got a hold of it. So it doesn't hurt to just call and ask. They'll let you know if they have it or not. Like I said, I don't know how many stores it is in, but mine was not on display yet. It was in the back and they were willing to sell it to me. So all right, so let's go into the packaging of this guy. It is in the same kind of packaging that all of the five pan eyeshadows are in. However, this one is a lot more luxurious as it has a gold lining just like the holiday palettes did last year as well. And also when you turn to the back, it actually has these five little dots here. If you poke a needle through them, you can get the individual pans out, which I think is really neat. You can really customize your own palette with this. I personally will probably never do that, but it is awesome that there is that option here. And of course, you're going to reveal the five beautiful cranberry themed eyeshadows. Natasha Denona has been going crazy with her eyeshadow palette releases. She's released three for the holidays, the gold palette, which was the Amazing, the mini star palette which left something to be desired and so I really was curious about this guy because the gold was so amazing the mini star was not as amazing so I was really curious as to how this guy would be so there are four brand new shades in this palette and there is one returning color and that is the shade nude which is in the Aries palette from last holiday it is a beautiful champagne -y color so really quickly I'm going to get into the formulation of each single eyeshadow in this palette since there are only five. So Natasha Denona said that four of these eyeshadows are cream powders, which are going to be these four on the outside, right here, two on each of the outsides, and then this middle color is actually a pressed powder. That is definitely true because this one is the most flaky of the bunch. There are three different formulas according to Natasha Denona. Two are crystal metallics, one is a duochrome, and two are matte. These two colors on the outsides are also considered crystal metallic. The center color is a duochrome and these two colors are matte. So this color right here is Daisy and this is a crystal metallic finish. It's actually quite sheer. I find the Natasha Denona swatches to be quite deceiving. They're very, very pigmented on her arm. However, as you can see in my swatches, they come off very, very sheer, which isn't always a bad thing, but that is something I want you to know. She does have deceiving swatches because this palette swatched really, really sheer. What I do slash don't like is that the glitters in this color, they are very silvery, so you can really see the glitter on your eyelids. I would have personally preferred a shimmer that was more similar to the base color just because I feel like it looks more seamless on the eyelid but that's just a personal preference right there it still is very beautiful the shimmers are very very small but it creates very good dimension to the lid I would recommend putting a base color underneath and then layering this on top I just apply it with my finger I didn't notice any fallout with it so that's good because I was concerned that would happen overall this is a very good shadow you just need to know how to use it now what is interesting about these two colors that are matte is that they aren't really matte mattes. They are more of a satin matte. There is one color in her new gold palette, that deep blue color, that also is like a satin matte. This isn't her traditional matte formula. They do have a satiny look in the pan, but of course when you apply them to the eye, they look matte on your eye. Like I said, these colors, they're definitely more sheer. They are buildable, but they aren't as buildable as I would have liked. I did spend a lot of time blending, I would say. These aren't difficult to blend, but I, they also 
didn't do the work. You know how there's just some shadows where the blending, it just blends out by itself? That wasn't the case with these. I did have to blend them, but it wasn't too much of an issue and it didn't come off patchy on my lid at all, which is very important. The colors are a little bit more deceiving as well than they look in the pan. I have both of these mattes on my lid and do you see how different, how much more red and how much more like burgundy plum this looks and how pink my lid looks. I do love this look, but it's just not what it looks like in the pan. So that is something you need to be aware of. This color in particular looks really, really deep, but honestly, it's not that deep at all. It's more pinky red than it looks in the pan. And this is much more pink and bright than it looks in the pan. Now this middle color right here, it's an interesting, very creamy formula, even though it is considered to be a pressed powder. It's duochrome to like an orangey peachy yellow. Yellow. I find that this color best applies with a finger. It can go on very sheer, but if you do want a little bit more of that deep orangey peach color, do use a brush, a wet brush, because you are going to get some fallout, and with a brush, it does apply more chunky. So personally, I would rather just layer it on with my finger, but you can use a wet brush, but like I said, it applies a lot more chunky and with a lot more fallout to the lid. That's not to say I don't like this color. I really do like this color. And then we have Nude right here. Now this is described as her crystal formula, crystal metallic. Personally, I just find it to be a shimmer with a little bit of glitters in it. Nothing too crazy, not really big chunky glitters. Similar glitters that are in the Daisy color. However, they match the base color more and the base color is more pigmented than in Daisy. This is a really good everyday color, but it has a lot of Shazam to it. I like this color a lot. I feel like I said a lot of bad things about this palette. It really is isn't a bad palette. There are a lot of good qualities to this palette. I really like the look I created and I feel like you can create a lot of different pretty looks with it. But the gold palette was just so good and this is just not one of my favorite five pan palettes. I have a few and I like the ones from last year better I think. Overall the quality of this is good but it's not great in my opinion. If you're into this color scheme I mean sure why not but do keep in mind that her swatches are deceiving and also just the colors, the way they look in the pan is also deceiving. I'm not bashing it at all. I like it and I love Natasha Denona in general and her formulas in general, but I just don't have the same deep love for this as I do her new gold palette. This is unrelated to the gold palette at all, but I just like the gold palette better. I don't know. I don't know. I, this is so nice. It's just not my favorite five pan palette. Anyways, really quickly, I'm going to show you how I got this look. So I started off with the shade Sakura and I put that all over my crease with a blending brush. Brush, blend it out pretty well. I find colors like that to be pretty difficult to work with. They tend to be patchy, but this one was not. Then I went in with the shade Blossom. Then I put that in my outer corner and really blended it. I wasn't too moved with the shadow just because it looked a lot deeper in the pan than it showed up and it didn't really build as much as I would have liked for it to, but blending wise I didn't have any issues. I then went back to that Sakura color and I put that all over my lid. Using my finger I dipped into Daisy and I just patted that all over my lid. I had no follow and I just thought that it looked beautiful layered over that cranberry color. On my lower lash line I mixed both of the matte shades and just kind of popped them underneath. And then I went in with the middle shade Botanic and I put that on my inner corner. This color is also very beautiful on the lid. You just gotta use it right, but I did want to incorporate it into this look just so you can see what it looks like. And then I layered a tiny bit of nude just to lighten it up because the orange was a little deeper than I would have liked. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that review I just did of the Cranberry palette. I like it. Don't get me wrong. Don't attack me. I'm just not floored by it, you know? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, comment down below and I will be happy to get back to you. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.